Animated features are, at their very core, expensive, time-consuming, hugely collaborative efforts. And I think some of them can lose their way because they are the upper creative management of them are being affected by a very large group of people who have a significant interest in the film and the success of the film. And I don't think it comes out of any malice, but I think if we think of a film as a, of a, a ship on the ocean, even a one degree change of course can ultimately, if you keep sailing on that, can take you way off target from where you want it to go. And I think a successful film is a film that's able to correct its course along the way um, in order to still hit the target, even though it's being buffeted by input from, it could be from executives, it could be from test screenings, it could be internal um, confusion of where the story is. Uh, it's very difficult to navigate that, especially when you're on the boat. It's much easier if you're up in the sky and you're looking down and you say, well, I've got a 10,000 foot view and I can see you're gonna miss the target, but very rare do we, who are actually making the films, have that benefit. So we're on the boat and we're trying to get to the mark. Um, in the case of the Lego movie, I think there were a number of factors. One is that uh, Lord and Miller had, had made Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs that, that people really loved. That these are very talented writer-directors and they were with some creative producers who believed in them and trusted them. Not that they weren't nervous. I think there were a lot of people that were nervous. And I think a lot of people at the outset thought the film, okay, we're making it for kids. The goal was always, I think the goal always for these kind of films that they, they are what we refer to as four quadrant, young and old, male and female. But a lot of those films end up being maybe just for young males or for young females. Um, and it's more of a rarity to be a film that is truly four quadrant. And Although we saw potential in the Lego movie early on and we looked at the script and it was very funny and we got the reels up and it was basically working, I would say very few people thought that we were gonna hit the target that we hit with that film. But I think what we did have, just to go back to my analogy with the boat, is I think we had a lot of people who were absolutely focused on doing the best job possible and that we worked in harmony to the point where we were self-critical, this reel isn't working, this scene just feels too slow, this character doesn't have the right amount of energy at this moment. All of those things that all filmmakers do, we had a really great group of directors and we had a, we had a co-director working with us in Australia who was there every single day, Chris McKay, who was also the anim supervisor. We had Lord and Miller who were pretty well always over in Los Angeles. Uh, and then the, um, and then all of the animation team was with us in, in Sydney as well with the lighters and everyone. Uh, and ed editorial was there too. So we were looking at it constantly and I think it's, it's because of the efforts of all those people that we were able to navigate those choppy waters and get to a place where we, that we really wanted to get to. I would say over my career, I've watched technology become less, uh, what's the right word for this? It, it, it's, technology takes up less of my day as the years go on. I'm still using the technology every single day. When I started off as an animator in computer animation, I remember my screen would be covered with fingerprints because I almost wanted to reach in and grab the silly thing and just pose it the way I wanted to. And I remember there was a day a week, I don't exactly remember the moment, when I was at ILM and then that screen just disappeared and I was able to animate and it was as if I was inside the monitor and I was able to move the character and pose it in a way that I had, even though I was pushing the buttons and moving the mouse, I was not aware of it anymore. So at that moment, technology became, was no longer the issue. The issue for me then was acting and performance. It was how do I get the best performance, the most true and honest performance out of this character that I'm animating, whether it be a dragon or, a, or Yoda or whatever we were doing at the time. It was not about the technology. Now, let me say, there were a lot of people at the company, it was all about the technology, and they were creating tools that were much more user-friendly. Kerry Phillips had created this facial system for us on Dragonheart, which was just genius. It allows us to move the head around 
a highly dense model around without any lag. This is years and years and years ago. This is you know just astonishing what he was able to do. And because of that, we artists, we animators, were able to do more iterations of the performance each day, week, and our work was better because of it. And Kerry and his team were doing all of the hard yards behind, making sure that it was all set up for us and were asking us, interacting with us, but the technology for me at least, and I know so for some of my team, it just we, we were presented with these great tools. Um, there are very few people on a film, like a Lego film, who can influence the story at a high level. The story comes in from the, from the writers, directors, comes in into the previs and the story team. They board it out, it gets prevised, gets onto the editor's bench, he's cutting it, it's now all digital obviously, and we start looking at it. People like me are sitting there and looking at it from, a, from an acting point of view, from a performance point of view, from a, do I believe in the characters? Editors looking at us, what's the pacing of this, the story, Am I, do we have the coverage that we need? I don't think we're getting, I don't think we're connecting with the character that we, that we at this moment, when we need to. The director's looking at the pacing of the story, oh, it's lagging out here, it's too fast here, we need, the, we haven't told, we haven't set it up well enough. And there's early meetings in editorial, at least there is at our studio, talking about those things. And that, for me, I love that part of the process. So I'm, I'm lucky, but most of my team hasn't got to that point because we, we just aren't able to have that many people in that room. I actually don't think it would work well with too many more than we have. We probably have six to eight people in the room on any given day. Um, and I think the success of a film is based on that core creative team and then relying on producers, executive producers, to come in with what I call fresh eyes. They're not there every day, and the best of them come in and say, I believe in that, I'm not following that, I think we need to work on it that, and we have that too. So if you've got that, and you've got the mix, and it doesn't mean every day everyone's gonna get along, these are, people feel very passionate about this, and there will be people knocking heads together, but if you've got a great a collaborative creative team, with the collective goals, we want to produce the best movie possible, and we're going to hold a mirror up to it and go, is that honest? No, that's not honest. It's not, that does, that's too on the nose. It's not, I don't believe in that. Okay, let's go back again. Is this real? Is, are, and if we do a test audience screening, which we do, and they put a camera out looking at the kids, in our case, looking at the movie, and we're watching their faces, you know, are they reacting at the moments when we think they are? We, we're big kids, but we're not the little kids. So are we, have we fallen in love with our, sh of our shots? What, what's the real little kid? You know, and they start to freak out. I love watching those, because the kids are just, you know, they're like, okay, I can see, we're on the note, we're, 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 where we need to be. I can see all these kids. Yeah, or oh, we lost them there. We gotta go back and look at that. So I think it's, 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 a, it's an uh, analysis of the movie on a daily, weekly um, basis, and being honest about where you are, and where the film is at that moment. I've wanted to come to view for years. Uh, Maria Elena has been very kind and has been, been uh, trying to get me to come and it just hasn't worked out timing wise. So I was thrilled I could come and represent the Animalogic team and show some of the behind the scenes work of our, what we did on the Lego movie. I just wish I could stay longer. I'm only here for like five days. And, and what's amazing about this is the collect, the, the, the speakers that she's collected. I mean, I go to the festivals and, and conferences and you know, you, you, they're always good speakers, but the, but the amount of good speakers and topics and it's just packed in here, I, I love it. I'm just sitting in the theater every day, just watching and soaking it in, sharing with colleagues and, and people I've admired for years and getting to hear them speak, like a Glenn Keane is, well, that would have been worth it just to come for that, but I got to get up and speak as well. So uh, I'm very honored to be here and I'm, I hope to do films in the future that allow me to come back.